What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Sion, from A17 Media, reporting live. And I'm back with the BMF recap. This episode six, titled Strictly Business. And we can get right into it. So in the first scene, we got, um, I believe, Meech narrating, of course. He's, um, you know, he had a really good quote, so I want to go ahead and read it. He said, people spend a lot of time in school trying to better themselves. Ain't much different from the streets. You learn how to count, do chemistry, and anticipate PD. I think he said anticipate PD. He said, the biggest difference between the two are the goals. In, in the school of hard knocks, if you ain't graduating, your ass is dying. I think that's a very, very deep quote. Um, I think it's very true. You know, I'm not a person from the streets, but I am a person that, you know, knows people from the streets or were in the streets, and I'm very familiar with the streets. And as someone who chose the path to school, I can say, you know, yeah, the streets and school are two polar opposites, I guess you could say, in a sense. But I will, I will, I agree. I think in both of, um, in both of paths, you know, whatever path you choose, I feel like in both paths there are, you know, there's goals. There ain't too much of a difference, like you said. You got goals, you know. In school, you learn chemistry, you learn how to count, whatever. Like you learn the basics of, you know, the, you know, the path, the basics of on the way to, eventually conquering the path of graduation. Whereas in the streets, you know, you learn basic things on how to survive, you know what I'm saying, how to, you know, get money, whatever, you know what I'm saying, and I feel like, you know, they are very much different, they do shape people, you know, people try to better themselves in both paths, you know, you have to do that in the streets, because if you don't, like you said, you don't graduate, you will die, and I think that was uh, a good quote to kind of begin this episode, I think it kind of set the theme for this episode, and, you know, we've seen a lot of graduation in this episode, we've seen a lot of, like, progressing, progressing, and we see how, you know, if you don't graduate in the streets, you, you will die, so, um, I think that was a good quote to start off this episode, and I think it just kind of set the tone, I think this writing on this episode was one of the best, I think this is one of the best episodes of this season so far, but moving forward, um, so we got meat. She goes to the store. He sees these little kids. You know what I'm saying? They asking for a 40 ball. Uh, he goes in. He gets some drinks for them, but obviously not a 40. Uh, he comes out. Lamar has a shotgun pointed at him. He's spooked. He drops his drink or one of the sodas. And uh, we see that security or somebody, I'm not for sure exactly who those two gentlemen were, but they came in. Shot back at Lamar, got into a little shootout. Pretty much saved Meech's life. So um, that was a crazy scene. I mean, we obviously know that Meech doesn't die, but that was a crazy scene just to see, you know, he could have lost his life simply just playing around in these streets. Next up, we got... um. Damn, I can hardly read my own hand right, man. I'm glad I'm out of school now. Um, so him and T are in the, uh, at the at someone's crib. I'd imagine Meech's crib, but they're arguing about prices. Um, they're trying to, you know, they're going back and forth about what they, you know, how they should, if they should keep doing the Fifty Boys thing, or should they do something different with it, you know. And um, you know, Meech is telling T, you know, they they can't be seen in these streets anymore, or at least for right now, you know, they got to switch up how they're selling it, how they're moving it. And, you know, they're just arguing like brothers all over again. I love those scenes, like I stated before in the last recap. But, yeah, they agreed that they can't be seen in these streets. So, moving forward, uh, Meech meets up with Q at the record store. <laughs> he gets curved. Q says he hears some things about him burning his last plug, you know, in the streets. You know, in the streets, the truth ain't always, you know, what what comes out, but I mean, he kind of did run off on his life plug, whatever. He, he fulfilled his duties, of course, so I can't agree with that, but you know, that's what's going on. That's the word. So, while me just me know with this uh, new plug or something, whatever he is, at the record store, we see that he uh, meets up with his college, I mean, meets up with his, one of his prof teachers in high school um, about, you know, trying to get a, be a part of the college fair. And his teacher actually says, you know, I can make something happen for you. I can uh, I can get you in there. You know, I can get you to speak with one of my friends at the university. But you're going to have to come and set up, you know, at 11 o'clock. 
So um, I, I, and I just want to say those two scenes being back to back with each other. I think it just goes right back to the quote at the beginning of the, of the episode, you know, where the you know school is a lot like the streets. You know, you got Meech meeting up with somebody from the streets. He's trying to graduate. He's trying to find someone where they can get their sell their bricks off to, and T's trying to meet up with his teacher about his future in college. You know what I'm saying? You could say those are two scenes, you know, where they're both trying to come up with, grad, you know, their own sort of graduation. And um, I think that was a very dope way to, you know, tell two of the same stories in two back-to-back scenes. So moving forward, we got Lamar. He pulls up to T school. This man's about to wreak havoc. He's about to murder this man in front of everybody. But he sees that they have security. He has security on campus with him, so he flees. Next up, we got um, the mom. She's in her room. She's crying. She's frustrated. She heard things in the last episode, you know. So she's she's not exactly happy with um with you know her children. So she, you know, T and Nicole they try to or not T and Nicole. I'm sorry, Meech and Nicole. They they're coming up. You know, they're trying to get her to come out the room, and she throws the picture of of the family at the door and tells them, you, you know, go away. I don't want to see y'all. So she's taking it way worse than the father about uh, finding out about T being in the streets. Next up, we got Snoop. Hilarious, bro. It's like, how could you do a scene about weed and have Snoop act like he doesn't condone it? You know? <laughs> Just hilarious. So um, we got um the dude from 12th Street. I'm going to have to give, figure his name out by the end of this week. Or by, by next recap. Sorry, y'all. But um, he's he. I find I find out that he's living at the uh, church, so he pays the uh, pastor Snoop, you know, his money, and he tells him, uh, you know, you don't need to be bringing reefer in, in the house of God. And I think that's just hilarious because you know it's Snoop, like of all people. But um, he tells him, you know, you can't be bringing all these women up in here. Blah blah blah. Snoop, pastor Snoop goes upstairs. He gives me his dad five dollars. He says he only has five. Hilarious, cause he just took in a, a huge wad of cash, being a church landlord. But um, yeah. So moving forward past that scene, uh, pops goes back to the crib that he's moved out of, uh, supposedly. But he goes back to the crib. Uh, he, he's 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 mad at Meech and T. They tell them why their mother's mad. He, he's he's like, oh. Why y'all bringing drugs in my house? And then Meech says, no disrespect, Pops, but you ain't been living here. Which is true. Like, you ain't been living here, bro. Like, why are you tripping? Like, I mean, I see why he's tripping, but it's like, bro, you ain't even living here. Like, why are you talking like this is your house? You know what I'm saying? You were, you walked out on all of us. Like, you walked out on your family. But um, so Meech and T, they have a quick brief of words as the father walks off. And um, they, say, they talk to each other about, you know, they need to chill out and... You know, all this other stuff, which they also tell their father that, you know, they're going to need security, which they, the family should have really took that a lot more serious as we see at the end of this episode. But yeah, so they're, you know, they're arguing, Meech and T are arguing. Um, Meech, or T says we shouldn't have kidnapped Zoe or whatever, something along those lines. And Meech says, you know, it was a soft kidnapping. <laughs> and I said that last week, like, this is the friendliest kidnapping ever. It's a soft kidnapping. He took, them, took her to get burgers, took her to get ice cream. Like, come on now, soft kidnapping. So moving forward, Lamar Miso with the 12th Street crew, he tells them, you know, we gonna have to take Meech and T out. Um, they they are they're like, nah, bro, we gonna take you out. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they all point guns at Lamar, uh, and they say, old school, your time is up. And they tell Slick, since you rolling with him, so is yours. And I think that was kind of foreshadowing, you know, for what was to come later in this episode. So next scene. Or the same scene, cop pulls up on Lamar. He, you know, he tells him, he pretty much threatens him, you know, you better chill out before you end up going back to jail because you're stupid. And we see he's very stupid. But, I mean, with, with crazy comes stupid. So next scene, we see that, uh, you know, our Meech and T's dad is trying to talk to T. He's trying to, you know, get some reasoning out of him. You know, ask him, you know, what's been going on, why he's been selling drugs, you know, whatever, what has him and... Meech been up to for the reason or why they are gonna need security. He doesn't answer, you know. Real, real little brother doesn't give up his big brother. But um, Meech walks in and he says, <laughs> "For someone with no key, you sure do find 
You sure do find you ways up. In, you sure do find your way up in here. T says, "Do you want me to leave?" And then the dad says, "It doesn't matter. Uh, you come and go at any time you want into." Anyway, that scene actually made me funny. I know this show's not really funny, but I mean, it made me laugh. This that scene actually made me laugh. That line that was pretty funny. You know, the dad is kind of annoying, but I thought that was pretty funny. You know, he's sticking with his his character. He he hates when Meech comes around. Obviously, he hates his son Meech. So next scene, we see that me, Meech and T, or was that in the same? That was in the same, I think it was in the same scene. I'm not for sure. But they agreed to give B Mickey a break. Um, T's not with it. Oh, yeah, they go outside to the car. But T's not with that. He's like, uh, I don't want to get this man no break. You know. So next scene, we see that Lamar and Slick are talking. Uh, slick is a slick ass. Trying to slick talk the, the slick talking Lamar, bro. Tries to throw him off his game, you know. Try to tell him, you you gonna get Monique back. You gonna get your family back. You know what I'm saying? Just slick talking, bro. I think that was a perfect name he could ever have, cause he always trying to slick talk a motherfucker on this. One. But um, Lamar's like f them light skin pretty boys. Uh, which I think this is weird. Like this is like a, a skin tone race war. Like we got going. We got the light skin fifty boys, you know, and then we got Lamar. You know, the chocolate brother. You know, chocolate brother trying to hate on the light skins. Like, what's up with that? It's, it's just like real life. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's always a chocolate nigga trying to hate on the light skin brother. Like, don't hate, man. Don't hate. But, um, yeah, he says, F them light skin pretty boys. Um, and F them other 12th Street boys, you know, because they obviously turned on them. Slick, Slick talks. Lamar, he tells him, you know, you know, the best way to... So whatever whatever this means, like the best way you can cut the heat off, they can get a blanket. You can do this, they can do that. But if you cut their water off, they're not gonna be able to poop. They're not gonna be able to wash their ass. Like whatever. I don't know. I don't even know what that meant. But I think Lamar obviously took it. A, I don't know if he took it the right way or a different way. But obviously we see that you know maybe he shouldn't have gave him any of those ideas, and he probably shouldn't have never rolled with him. You know, like 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 they said in one of the last scenes, like since you're rolling with old school, you're done. And we obviously see that eventually he's done. So Lamar tells Slick, you know, if this plan doesn't work, they're not gonna be the only ones. Me, Meech and T not gonna be the only niggas with their water cut off. <laughs> so more foreshadow foreshadowing, as you can see. So um, T he meets up with B Mickey. He sells him a brick. He doesn't give it to him like they like him and Meech agreed. Um, they have a little way of words or whatever. It's not really anything too important. I don't think they're just roasting on each other. But um, on his way out, T sees K a jacket, which is Kato's jacket, on um, B Mickey's couch or whatever. Holy sh holy shit! I just spit. I don't know. I hope y'all didn't see that. Next scene. <laughs> So we have Lamar. He's trying to go um, apologize to Monique. He's trying to get back with his family. And um, he says, it's nothing I could have did about Meech's crazy, crazy ass, which is like kind of ironic because it's like, bro, you're, you're the crazy one. Like you trying to raise a daughter that's not yours. You trying to save a chick who's really not worth saving. And you, I mean, also, I understand you trying to get your blocks back, but I mean, you going about it the wrong way. Like you're obsessed with the fifty boys, but um. So uh, Mo Monique says uh, she tells him like you need to stay away before I get a restraining order on your crazy ass, and you know Lamar just goes insane. He tries to reach for her through the door or whatever. You know he's saying a bunch of things and Zoe sees it, and that just that he after he sees that Zoe sees him that just threw him over the edge. I feel like, and after that he just he just he just lost it. I think that was what pushed him over the edge. I think that was what it was. I don't think it was the plan not working because whatever plan they tried to do, I mean, obviously we see that it worked or we'll see that it worked. So next we see that, um, you know, 50 boys, I call this the graduation scene. T tells them, you know, if he tells the little 50 boy uh, stooges, he tells them, you know, y'all are the new Terry and Meech's. So me and T, me and me and Terry, we or me and Meech, we graduated from Pat. Y'all are graduating from us. So now y'all are the new T and Meech's. So he gives them all their own brick, of course, to buy. And um, he he notices that he's late for a meeting with his uh, at the college fair. So he goes to the college fair. 
And um, the college, or not college, yeah, college fair with his teacher. T goes to the college fair with his teacher. Um, the college person asked him, you know, what is the time you shed blood and sh- sweat and tears? And T automatically thinks about when him and Meech had to bury rock. He asked him about work history. He obviously doesn't have any, I don't think, so he doesn't say anything to that. He asked him about his greatest challenge. In his mind, he thinks about lying to his mother, so he walks away. He tells him he can't do this. You know, he's a little frustrated with the questions, you know. He, I don't know if he was thinking maybe college isn't for him. I don't know. But his teacher follows him. He's frustrated. He's like, you know, you asked me for this meeting. Like, why? what's up, bro? Like, why you, why you want to get cold feet now? He says, you better get your head in the game. Before uh before you wreck your future, I think that was a pretty deep quote from the teacher because I mean he pretty much ends up wrecking his future. But you know obviously in the real life story of BMF, but I think that was a really crazy quote. You know that, that was probably something that stuck with him. So next scene we see that uh, I'm starting to see you know Meech he's making a name in the streets. You know he's threatening people. He threatens the 12th Street dude. You know, you know, you got me this meeting with Q, he, and he didn't, whatever, like, what's going on? What's up with that? And I see he's making a name, you know, he, he pretty much caught the j I mean, he didn't kill J-Mo, but he's getting a rep off the J-Mo body. He's getting a rep off of kidnapping Zoe. Like, nobody knows what really happened except for him and his brother. So, he's getting a name in the streets, you know, he's for being a crazy dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, or somebody that's not to be played with. So, I'm, I'm, noticed that, I'm noticing that progression, because he's, he's kind of threatens the 12th Street dude. They didn't respect... Uh, the 50 boys at first but you know they're he kind of you know is that a threat he's like hey take it how you want it so you know you see Meech is kind of you know he's becoming feared in the streets regardless of what actually happened so next scene Lamar robs the kids uh Kato and one of the 50 boys you know they they take a walk off uh Lamar pulls up on one of the kids he you know he said I'm gonna need that or I'm gonna have to beat you up and he ends up punching the kid in his eye or something like that. So he, I, you know, Kato, Kato's setting a lot of things up behind the scenes. I don't know if y'all are peeping that, but she's a snake in the crew, bro. I said this last episode. Like, she's the reason they got robbed in the first place. And I guess they're robbed all over again. So it's like, you know, she's the reason behind this. And I think that was all four bricks, if I'm not mistaken. So he takes he takes their dope all over again. And, uh... So we, we get we move I'm sorry y'all I'm trying to read my handwriting it's so horrible. So we see um that they move that they've gotten they've gotten robbed in the next scene and the fifty boys is meeting up with T. T's pissed off with them. And one of them says to T, Why are you mad at us when the nigga who did this and everything else is still out there? And um I think that's actually a pretty good question. Like, y'all you, you know, you, you mad at us, but you, you ain't did nothing about Lamar. Like he's been violating y'all this whole time. Y'all ain't did nothing about it, so I think that's a pretty valid question. But T gets mad. Meech tells him, like, what's what's wrong with you? What's been getting into you, bro? Um, you know, they're talking about how Lamar is the person behind this, responsible for this, and we need to do something. And uh, Meech says, I got something for that midnight motherfucker. So this is a, this is a race war, I'm telling you, bro. This is a black-on-black race war, bro. Uh, skin tone war. But he said he got something for that midnight motherfucker. He gonna lay him down. Like, well, lay him down then, bro. Like... It's, it, it, this man has done more than enough for y'all to go out and do something about it at this point. Um, but yeah. So um, he tells he tells them also, he tells them we're not the 50 boys anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. They're telling each other. Like, we're not the 50 boys anymore. We graduated. Like, like I said at the beginning, this is the theme of the episode, graduation. So next scene, the lawyer meets up with the parents. Like I said last, last recap, they should have took the 25K, like, that's freaking obvious. Like now, now they this is over with. After last episode, she told them like we have three days to accept the twenty five thousand. They took forever, you know, whatever. So they, you know, I think that's kind of a realistic scene because it's like they probably forgot. <laughs> they probably obviously forgot, or maybe they thought they could fight it, whatever. But that was a dumb idea. Next scene, Nicole and Darius are in the room. You know, they're about to have their first kiss. Ooh, very you know cute. You know what I'm saying? You know, kitty love, you know, obviously. Uh, T walks in, you know, makes Darius go home. Whatever. It's a, it's a whatever scene. We get into, you know, Nicole and T, you know, she's asking them why about the security or whatever. Why? Why do we have to have security? T tells her, like, you know, we're in serious danger. And we see, you know, she should have obeyed it and took that more serious later on. 
So the next scene, Lamar kills Slick. Slick tries to come in, you know, and Slick talk, whatever, you know. Lamar really ain't going. And we see Lamar got some vocals. Like, he's singing. He's singing, you know. He's getting his Chris Brown. He's getting his Bobby Brown on, you know. So, Slick is trying to Slick talk him once again, you know, like, hey, man, you know, I don't think we should try to kill Meech and T, you know. I think we should, don't you? You know, he's just trying to Slick talk. You see it in his face. And Lamar just starts singing, You Can't Stop the Rain. Stabs him as he's as Slick is trying to leave. And, um. Uh, yeah, man, this scene gave me nightmares, bro. That night, I was I was at home alone, and I was just like, I was terrified, my boy. Like I was like, man, this man Lamar is a menace to be reckoned with, to be dealt with, you know. So this scene was crazy. Uh, like I said last episode, Slick had it coming. Like you, he already gave up the drop on the drugs, um, and he, I feel like he just had it coming that he was gonna die. I, I didn't think it was gonna be this next episode, but. He bled out, and yeah, this scene is going to give me nightmares for years to come. <laughs> so next up, B, Mickey, and Kato, uh, they go to his, to his crib. I call this the bitch you live like this scene. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of that Mickey Mouse uh, meme. But yeah, they go to the crib, uh, to Kato's crib. Her crib is a mess. B, Mickey notices things. He's, it's got him thinking that she's messing with another dude. So there's that. The next scene... Uh, Meech, he secures the plug with Q, so that's good. Um, only thing else is he's gambling. He he wins everybody's money, so you know it kind of secures that he's he's a money getter. He knows how to gamble pretty well, so you know there's a scene that kind of tells that story. I didn't really get nothing else out of it. Uh, the next scene, the mom and dad, uh, they're I guess they're worried about T. They're talking about T, you know, or not? Yeah, T. You know, they're thinking about. Saving him or whatever. I don't know if that was earlier, but uh, but that that happened. And then they asked T, you know, like what's going on. You know, they kind of you know give him a little bit of soul searching. You know, they tell him about you know immorality. You know, poverty doesn't shouldn't lead to that shouldn't change something about immorality. I I didn't write that quote down, but you know the mother's trying to scold him. You know about selling drugs. T's trying to justify it, but at the end of the day, you know the parents are not gonna agree. And of course, the father, you know, he doesn't really care for T, but Amich, but he, you know, he kind of puts his hand around uh, T, you know, he's kind of feels bad for him, you know. In the early earlier scene that the mom and dad had, you know, they felt that they could still save him and get him through school, so, you know. And I think it kind of goes back to the first scene, the open scene, where uh, Meech is narrating, he says school was never his thing, so. Maybe the parents knew that, and they, you know, never just really pressed the issue. But they're trying to press the issue for T. They feel like he could still be saved regardless of his actions. So next up, um, we see that the, uh, for the 12th Street member, uh, Slick's body gets dropped off at, at the church. Lamar drops the body off at the church. It's menace, man. Drops the body off at the church and uh, sends a message, I think, if you ask me. I predict that this is going to lead to the 12th Street dude. He's going to end up crossing Meech. He's going to fall in line with Lamar because they see he's crazy. I could be wrong, but I think that's where this is going to lead. Next scene, the uh, 50 boys are no longer the 50 boys. They say the 50 boys are no more. We need a new name. Uh, Detroit players, Southwest players, a bunch of BS is getting thrown out. But uh, Meech comes in and says, how about the family? So we see this is about to be the birth of BMF. Um... Meech and B. Mickey have a little heart to heart. <laughs> you know, he's like, <clears throat> he's like, hey man, you know, you've been my nigga since day one, but uh, hey, this is just what it is. Like, you got a, you got a good discount. You can make your own moves. Meech approaches T, which I thought this was really commendable about their business. He doesn't try to say anything in front of B. Mickey. He goes straight to T. He's like, hey man, I thought we were gonna give him a key. Why'd you sell him a key? So T is like, hey bro, uh, I think he's smashing Kato. And to be quite honest, we don't need him thinking he's equal, which I don't know if that's going to be a mistake or not, but we'll see in the future because we see in the next scene that B. Mickey says he's tired of being the third wheel, you know. Of course, he said that to Meech. And uh, he's also frustrated about Kato. You know, he's like, "You are you smashing another nigga? Like, it's like, come on, bro. You catching feelings for, for the, you know, like a snake, bro. Like, you're you not moving street smart, like. So maybe T is a couple of steps ahead of the game by not really, you know, just letting them, you know, sell the keys. Because, I mean, obviously, 
You know, you, you don't have your head in the game, B. Mickey. You know. So the last scene that we see of this, of this episode is quite horrific. Um, Darius and Nicole, they're walking away. You know, they're trying to run away from security. They want to get their first kiss in, which we see is a mistake. You know, they should have took it more serious. You know, that T and Meech warned Nicole, you know, that you shouldn't be going out of the security supervision. So they run away and Lamar pulls up on Darius and Nicole. You know, Lamar tries to get Nicole to come with them. She doesn't. Darius kind of jumps in the way. Lamar stabs Darius like he did Slick earlier. Um, very horrific. Nicole runs away. And Darius grabs Lamar's leg as he tries to chase Nicole. Lamar stabs him again. He's obviously dead. He takes off. He just He's just killed a kid. He takes off. Nicole comes back. She finds Darius' dead body. So she's now scarred for life as well. The street life has, you know, affected her now. So it's, I think it's just unfortunate, you know, unfortunate situation. I think this was hands down the best episode we've seen so far. Better than last week, and last week was really good. Um, I feel like the graduation theme was very prevalent in this episode, you know. If you don't learn how to, you know, save yourself, you will die. And we've seen that's what happened with Slick this episode. You know, he didn't save himself. He didn't learn learn his lesson. He didn't get from Lamar's side. And he ended up paying the ultimate price for it. Um, Nicole lost her first boyfriend, her first kiss, maybe, due to T and Meech's bullshit. And, uh, man, I just think this was a crazy episode. There's a lot of foreshadowing. A lot of good stories told, a lot of lessons learned. But yeah, that's all I really got to say. I predict that uh, Lamar, they're going to have to do something about Lamar. They're going to have to do something about him. Uh, they can't keep running away from this problem. You know, it's, 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 just getting, it's looking bad, bro. It's looking bad, bro. All this stuff that he's did to him, bro, to, did to them and their crew, bro. It's like, you, you got to do something, bro. Families are starting to be affected by it. Like, y'all got to do something. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, I think... I think something's gonna happen, but something's gotta happen. Like, like it's one thing for me. You, oh, you're talking. Like, what would you do? Like, this is the 2000s, bro. It's the 2010s. Like, of course, of course, going after Lamar would probably be a dumber decision to just act on if it's not self defense in the 2010s. But this is the 1990s, bro. Or if I'm not mistaken, this might even be the 1980s. Like, you niggas can catch a body and nothing can happen. Like, this nigga Lamar has been catching bodies since like the second episode. Nothing has happened to this man. He, no police. The police are on to him, but, I mean, you know, like, the BMF is smarter than that. The 50 boys are smarter than that. Catch this body, lay Lamar down, and let's let's get this over with, bro. Like, it's the 1990s, it's the 1980s. Y'all probably gonna get away with it. Y'all got a cop on y'all's team. Like, y'all niggas good, bro. Like, people are getting affected by this. So, hopefully next week we see some retaliation. Um, obviously we know the real life story, Leighton Simps or whatever. He's the Lamar character is obviously still alive. So I don't know how that's going to play out, but yeah, man, this has been the BMF recap episode six, strictly business. Um, I see y'all showed me hella love on the last episode. So I hope y'all continue. Remember to like comment, subscribe and turn on post notifications. It's your boy C young with the BMF recap. And I'm out. I'll catch y'all this week, hopefully on a 2 of 2. Or if not, if we don't get to record for show on a recap episode 7. So, yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what y'all think, bro. I got the cap on. You know what I'm saying? I'm a player. I'm a true player. I got one new poster. I'm going to get some more for y'all. I'm going to try to go do that today. So, hopefully by next episode, y'all see some more posters. But let me know, man. I'm trying to do... I wanted to see if I would do some news videos as well. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't about just pop culture as well. I'm trying to bring some new things to this channel. Um, we got a video dropping me and my boy DeMont. We just did that. So stay on the lookout for that. No escape. It's probably the best video I've ever done. I'm probably going to throw that up on the channel. So yeah.